Hello, today we're going to talk about micropipetting. So micropipetting is a very useful tool for when you want to measure and transfer very specific, and in this case, very small volumes of liquid. So we have to use specific tools to be able to do micropipetting. Those are called, of course, micropipettes. There are different sized uh, micropipettes to measure different sized volumes of liquid. We use three specific uh, micropipettes in this lab. The ones here that have the gray cap, these measure the smallest volumes of liquid. So these are volumes of liquid from about half a microliter up to 10 microliters in volume. To give you an idea of about how much liquid that is, a melted snowflake is just a few microliters in volume. The next micropipette that we use is this one here that has the yellow cap. So this yellow capped micropipette measures a volume from 10 microliters up to 100 microliters. And finally, this blue micropipette here measures a volume of liquid from 100 microliters to 1,000 microliters. 1,000 microliters is also one milliliter. If you're not sure about how large one milliliter is, you can think about when you go to the doctor and they give you kind of that gross pink medicine that has the little cup on the cap. So those cups usually have volumes of measurement in milliliters. So that can give you an approximate idea of how much volume that is. So I'm going to show you how we measure and transfer volumes of liquid using these micropipettes. And I'll start with using this blue micropipette here. So again, this measures our largest volumes of liquid. To set the volume of liquid you would like, you're going to use this dial on the top. And we're going to look in the window on the front of this pipette to confirm that we have the correct volume that we'd like. So I'm going to start with a volume of 250 microliters. This dial on the top, if you spin to the right, this no the numbers will go down. If you spin to the left, the numbers will go up. Now, to, this volume goes up to 1,000, so to set this for 250 microliters, we need this window to read 0, 0250. Okay, and there we have it set. Now, if we were to make our window on our yellow pipette look the same, 0250, that would not be 250 microliters. That, in fact, would be 25 microliters. How do we know the difference? Well, in the window on the yellow micropipette, we can see that there is a line that runs through that window. That line represents the decimal point. So 025 decimal point zero equals 25 microliters on my yellow pipette. The same goes for my gray pipette. 0250 on my gray pipette would be 2.5 microliters because that line in the center of my window uh, now is in the middle as opposed to one more position down as we saw in the yellow pipette. So 2.5 microliters um, would be 0250 for my gray pipette. So that's how you know if you're setting the correct volume on these particular sets of pipettes. Okay, so we have 250 microliters set in my volume here. To hold your pipette, you're going to reach your hand out just like you're shaking hands with someone. It does not matter if you are right or left-handed, it works the same for both. This curved edge of the pipette, you can place over the base of your fingers like so. This allows you to curl the pipe, your fingers around the pipette and gives you access to this plunger on the top with your thumb. You'll notice that this plunger, when we press this plunger down, you can press it down gently and you'll get resistance when the top of the pipette is almost entirely down to the top of, or excuse me, the top of the plunger is almost all the way down to the top of the pipette, but not entirely, okay? This is what we call the first stop. That first stop is the measure, what we use to measure this particular volume of liquid in our window here. So when you press down to that stop, you're expelling this volume of air from your pipette out the bottom of your pipette here. That means when we place this pipette into a solution and you draw up your thumb from the plunger, you will draw up that correct volume of liquid. So what does it mean for then if we can push this plunger all the way down to the second stop? That second stop is for when you're expelling the liquid. When you press all the way down to the second stop, you are basically allowing a second puff of air to come out of your pipette, ensuring that all of the liquid from your original pipetting is now removed into the tube or the bottle that you are now transferring your solution into. So can we pipette as I have here? Can I start to place this pipette into one solution and start pipetting and then into another and into another? 
No, that's actually a really bad idea. Why? Because any liquid that this pipette comes into contact with is then going to mix with every other liquid after. We call that cross-contamination. So how do we avoid cross-contamination? Well, we can actually place a disposable, what we call pipette tip, onto the end of our pipette here. That will ensure that we do not have any mixing of our liquids and chemicals inside of our pipette. We have three different sets of tip boxes that we use for our three different sized micro pipetters. These largest tip boxes here go with my large blue pipette. To place a pipette tip onto your pipette, you're going to simply give it a couple of taps. You'll notice that the pipette tip does not become flush with the bottom of the pipette here. It's not supposed to. A couple gentle taps and you're good to go. Whenever you are finished using your pipette tip box, make sure you close the box. This will prevent any contaminants from the air from falling onto your pipette tips. Okay. So now let's go ahead and measure and transfer some volume of liquid. I have a tube of water here that I want to transfer 250 microliters of into my tube that's in my rack here. Again, why are we pipetting this? Because the probability of us pouring this solution into the microfuge tube and getting exactly 250 microliters is very low. So the, using the pipettes ensures we get the correct and accurate transfer of this liquid every time. So to pipette, you're going to quick, first quick ensure that you have the correct volume, which I do. Now we have to press the plunger down to that first stop to make sure that we're drawing up the correct volume of liquid. But do we want to press to the first stop before or after we place the pipette into the tube? Well, we actually want to press it before we place the pipette tip into the liquid. Reason being, if we place the tip into the liquid and then press the plunger down, what you will do is push air into this tube here. That will cause air bubbles to form inside of your solution, which will then preve uh, may prevent you from drawing up the correct volume of liquid. So press to the first stop before you place the pipette tip into the tube, place the tip into the solution, and now to draw the solution up into your micro pipette tip, you're just simply going to slowly raise your thumb off the plunger. Once your thumb is off the plunger, pull the pipette tip straight up and out of the tube. It is very important at this step to ensure that you check to make sure you have your correct volume of liquid inside of your pipette tip. If you have air bubbles inside of your liquid, what this means is that you have not drawn up the correct volume of liquid. In fact, you've drawn up less than 250 microliters because those air bubbles inside there are replacing the volume of the liquid that should be in there. So always give this a check and make sure you cannot see any bubbles inside of here. No bubbles here, so that looks good. Now we're going to transfer our liquid into our microfuge tube here by placing the pipette tip inside of the tube. To expel the liquid, you're now going to slowly press down to the first and then the second stop. You may push air bubbles into your solution while you are doing this. That is okay in what we call your reaction tube. We just don't want to push air bubbles into your original reagent tube. Now, when you are finished, you notice that if I were to take my thumb off this plunger, the top of the plunger here, what would happen? Well, I would simply draw up all of the solution that was still inside of my tube because my pipette tip is still in the liquid. So what I need to do is to keep my thumb pressed down on the plunger, pull the pipette tip up and out of the tube, and now I can release my thumb. To confirm that I have that 250 microliters of liquid in here, I can look at the markings on the side of the tube. This will tell me that, yes, in fact, I am right about 250 microliters, so I've successfully pipetted. To remove your pipette tip from your pipette, if you are switching, switching now and using a different liquid, there is a button that is across from the curved edge of the pipette here. If we press that button, you will eject the pipette tip. And of course, we would throw this in our biohazard waste. So thank you for joining me today. That is how you pipette a solution, and we'll see you next time.